So we've been seeing some comments coming in about uh, investors buying brand new houses. And I know you've talked about this on LinkedIn a lot, but uh, what, what's that all about? Okay, good. Yeah. Um, okay. Great question. So you're hearing, we're hearing that on Instagram, aren't we? So that's interesting that it's trickling out to um, the kind of retail customer. It's called build for rent BFR for short, and it's home builders selling houses to investors, right? Historically they sell them to home buyers, but investors get their hands on a lot of them oftentimes secondhand because a home buyer buys it and then an investor buys it from them later on. Uh, but it's, it works for all parties involved, right? So an investor buying a brand new home doesn't have to have that fear of well, what happens if the roof caves in in two months, right? Like that extreme example, but nothing's worse than buying a rental home and then having the air conditioner break. You buy a brand new home, you've got something under warranty. It's brand new. You're not going to have any major repair costs for maybe three years, right? Which is a beautiful way to start an investment relationship with the property. Um, so investors love it, willing to pay a premium for it. Builders love it because builders just want, you know, builders are very interesting beasts. People don't understand uh, much about them and why would they? When you see the subdivision for sale, you drive by, there's flags out there. They've got a model open. You can go in and buy a house. That builder may be selling 65 houses there. They've got 65 they're looking to get to next and 65 behind that. And they've got raw land behind that. And they're searching for land behind that. So they're building a pipeline over time. So even when they're able to sell houses to owner occupants, they love the idea of selling homes to uh, investors also, because especially in entry level housing, you know, if, if 25 to 30% of all the households in this country, single family households, maybe it's 35, I forget now, but a big chunk, about a third are tenants living in single family homes. You go to the entry level, you know, the three bedroom, two bath neighborhoods, it's 50%. Half of the houses are owned by rent, are owned by investors and being rented. But people drive through, they assume they're all homeowners, but they're not all homeowners. A lot of investors are in there. So the market's always been there. Um, builders like selling to investors because they like selling houses. And it's just as simple as that. And of course, a tenant loves renting a new house. I mean, who, who, whoever thought you could actually become a tenant and be the first person to ever live in a property? I've always yeah. called it the booger factor, right? Remember that? <laughs> Just happened to my, my sister and her and her husband. They, they moved into a brand new home as a renter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, what a great opportunity. The booger factor we used to laugh about is that you walk into a house, I don't care how pristine it is, if it's been lived in, somebody wiped a booger on the wall at some point. Some kid <laughs> wiped a booger on the wall. <laughs> and you just can't get over that because it is what it is, right? <laughs> when there's a zero booger factor, you don't even know the booger factor exists until you walk into a house where there's no booger factor. And you're like, wow, something's different here. <laughs> I, don't, I can't put my finger on it, right? It's the booger factor that's, that's in the back of your mind saying, I need to have this house. So tenants win, builders win, investors win. Um, and this trend really kicked off where Wall Street buyers, Wall Street investors are buying large numbers of new homes from builders. Uh, we're in the middle of a lot of that. But we started a new program called RW uh, Select. It's so new, I can't spit it out. RW Select, which is we're packaging new homes for small investors. So if you're an investor who um, likes the idea, let's, let's say you're near New York, right? A lot of my friends are in New York. Um, you're not gonna buy a cash flowing house for 200 grand in New York. It's not gonna happen, right? So you can buy one in Florida or North Carolina or Texas or Tennessee or Georgia. Uh, but when are you gonna do that, right? Like how are you gonna do that? The long distance buying, the fear that that brings to somebody is mitigated drastically by the house being brand new. Mm -hmm. Right now I check the builder out, I check the neighborhood out, I check the market out. The house is perfect and brand new. My biggest fear is the house is not going to be a good condition. The fact that it's in perfect condition mitigates that. So um, the builders are excited about what we're saying here because we're reaching a new audience for them. And again, small investors love it for the reasons we gave and more brand new rental houses for tenants is just good for the, good for the universe. So. Um, we're dealing with a lot of um, unusual situations and negotiations between large institutional investors and home builders. And I'm really excited. You know, Noel Christopher on our team is like one of the best guys in the industry in this right now because of how rapid his learning curve is, is accelerating because of how many deals he's in the middle of. Uh, and one of the things that's a challenge, the reason why it is so complicated is that you'll meet a builder and you'll say, I've got investors that want to buy a lot of homes. Are you interested in talking about that? And some of them say yes. And we say, well, tell us the situation. They say, well, you know, I've got land. 
I can just sell you the land. I can get the entitlements on the property, meaning get the approvals for the lots, and I can sell you that. I could do anything. I could get the roads and this the electrical and the sewer put in and uh, and sell it to you like that. Or I can build the houses and sell them to you finished. I can, build, like, in other words, there's too many options, right? Like, what do you want to do? And the investors are like, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Here's the reality. Option one is let the builder finish the houses, buy them from the builder when they're actually complete. You pay top dollar for that, but you take no development risk, right? The builder's taking all the development risk. Development risk is what if a hurricane comes through when the houses are half done, washes out a lot of stuff. There's a lot of what if the, something on the finances go wrong and the economy goes wrong? There's a fair amount of development risk. And if you're, you're taking it all, you make more money. So some builders want that. They'll take the risk. Investors want it. I don't want the risk. I'll pay a higher price. If the investor says, I would rather get a better deal. Well, the way you do that is that you go to option two, where you buy the land from the builder. Okay. And then you pay them to build the houses either a fee-based thing, I'll pay you 20 grand a house, 50 grand a house, whatever the number is, um, or I'll just finance the cost of the construction. So I'm a money company, or I'm a capital company, that's something that comes naturally to me, and if I take on some of that development risk by buying your land, but then financing the development, I'm in the game with some development risk, and so therefore, I'm gonna get a higher return, so I'm gonna get a lower price. That's option two. Option three is, I'll even finance the purchase of the land. So if you've identified a parcel that you can do this with, I'll finance the purchase of the land. I'll take the, you know, the time that it takes. I'll wait for the time that it takes for you to get the approvals, to do all the entitlements, to get the subdivision approved. I'll finance the installation of the roads and the, um, the sewer and the electric and everything else. And then we'll build the houses together. And there I get the best deal because I'm really your finance partner on the subdivision. And so my yield is going to be the highest out of those three categories. What we're finding as we analyze more and more of these deals is that the margin between like something we looked at just yesterday, um, if you pay retail, like you're the builder who's going to, I mean, the, you're the investor who's going to buy the houses when the builder finishes them and delivers them and you're paying retail. In this case, you get a five and a quarter percent net yield or cap rate. It's pretty good, right? People are okay with that. It's not setting the world on fire, but it's brand new houses. If you buy the land and then finance the uh, building of the properties, take that first tier of development risk, you can get like a five and three quarters or a six. Is that, it was actually a six. So you go from five and a quarter to six just by taking that development risk. And if you go all the way to scenario three, where you're buying, you're basically going in from the very beginning, you get like a six and a quarter. So five and a quarter to six and a quarter, where the middle step is six. So you get three quarters of the way through that. You get a, you can you can manufacture an extra point in cap rate or net yield, whatever you call it. But you get three quarters of that point just by buying the land first and financing the construction. So we think a by codifying each of those three scenarios, and maybe there's others, but those three work right now. You've got a good, better, and best scenario, and the better one actually gets you the most bang for your buck because you're getting three quarters of a point more net yield for just buying the land up front. Builders like it too, because they get cash for their land. All right. That helps them with their finances. Then they put money into building the properties and they get the rest of it after that. So that's, that's my favorite scenario. And it's the kind of thing that we're now, I think we're actually, we could say that we are helping to set some of the standards in build for rent right now, based on the fact that we're involved in real negotiations between builders and large investors and we're navigating and figuring these questions out and trying to create a blueprint so it's getting exciting